The beginning of an anime season is an exciting time. There are dozens of new anime out, lots of different genres, something for everyone. Well, unless you're just a snob who hates modern anime and only loves retro, but we'll ignore him for now. For those in the anime community, the start of the season is also a sort of game, as we try to predict what shows will be good or bad. So let's look at what we knew about Grim Guard before it aired to see where expectations were, or at least my expectations. First of all, the genres include action and fantasy, which so far so good, at least for me. Sure, many of these shows do feel it would be anything worthwhile, but I do love a good fantasy, so maybe it would be a good one. Next we see the studio's A1 pictures. They tend to do a lot of anime, but most of it really isn't that good. There are some exceptions, but most of their shows tend to have pretty good production values, but bad stories. And then we see that this is a light novel adaptation. Again, some exceptions do apply, but light novel adaptations tend to be pretty bad, especially the more recent ones. At best, they may offer a little bit of fun, but the stories they tend to tell tend to be overly cliché and filled with problems. And then from the trailer, we see a mixed faction of fans ever showing what the show is trying to be. Just a show to appeal to fans, but offer them nothing of substance. Between the studio, the source, and the trailer, this is three strikes against the show. Plenty of reason to think it would be terrible, and not even bother with the first episode. Not to mention the fact that the characters are taken to a game-like world, a concept that has been done a number of times typically very badly. In fact, I hadn't found a single show of the genre I liked before this year. Though it could be that SEO turned me off so much to the genre, I really didn't try that many. But I do make it a point to try as many of the new anime as I can, give them an episode to prove themselves at least. So I gave the first episode a try. And as you can see from the fact that I'm making a review of it, I made it to the end. So is this show as bad as it first appeared, or is there something more here? Let's get into the show and try to find out. So, as I mentioned earlier, the premise really isn't anything too out of the ordinary here. You have these people who are trapped in a video game-like world and are trying to figure out how to survive. The concept has been done tons of times, not just in anime, but even before I got into anime, I read countless fan fictions like this based off my favorite games. Though sometimes what can be better than an original concept is a cliché one done in a slightly different way. As an example, there are countless mechs out there, but what makes shows like Evangelion and Gurren Lockett special is how they're able to take the cliché concepts and do something different with them. And this is what Grimgar tries to do. Instead of following the characters like Kirito who are just awesome and overpowered, instead focuses on a group of characters who really are quite pathetic, at least at the start. They struggle against the weakest of enemies, and while they do go stronger throughout the series, they never seem to be all that powerful. The fact that they are so weak lets the show feel really realistic, and we see the struggles that they are going through, such as being so short on money. One of the things about Grimgar that makes it stand out is how slow it is. It doesn't try to rush things, instead just taking its time and letting the viewer take in the life these characters are living. While this does make the show boring at times, it really helps to establish the world they are living in, and it's something I appreciate. Still, there were some times where it felt like they were stretching out material they had just to make their material fit a 24-minute episode. Another thing I really liked about Grimgar was its way of blending drama with the whole action-adventure plot. Despite the fact that this is an action-adventure show, there's several time spent on just showing the characters and their interaction. Some of this is showing their friendship and just throwing in some comedy life in the mood, though we do have other times where this is showing how they deal with the struggles of this world and come to terms with some difficult events. This is the case where the slow pace of the show really helps it, as it does not feel like things are bad one episode and then they just magically get better. We also have times that illustrate the natural friction that would occur between these characters as they try to deal with each other. This never felt overly dramatic, but just added another layer of complexity to the show. And then there is the emotional power of some of the scenes, which is really nothing short of amazing. These moments were the most powerful of any anime that I had seen recently. All this drama just made the show feel like a slice of life that just happened to take place in a fantasy world. And I don't mean this in a boring way like I normally complain about slice of life, but instead in a realistic way which just makes the show come alive a lot more. It felt like these were real people living in a real fantasy world, if that makes any sense. I also like how it handled this being a video game type world. The show really downplayed it, just showing the world as it was and trying to make the video game rules make sense. There were also some moments that really connected to me as a gamer, but they were subtle enough that I didn't feel like the show was just trying to pander. I will admit that maybe this is just me overthinking things because of how subtle this stuff was. Something else I really liked here is the way this show portrayed the monsters. Typically in a video game like World, there are enemies that are just there to fight, and there's not a lot of thought put into their side of the story. The way Green Car handles it though is that you see how the goblins are also fighting for survival, and they aren't just evil, and they also feel pain as well. I actually expected the show to have a twist where the humans are the real monsters, but I'm actually kind of glad the show did not take that route. At least not yet, because that would take away focus from everything else that was going on. So to answer my question at the start of the video, this show is not nearly as bad as I first thought it would be, and there really is a lot more here than I expected. It really tries to be a realistic story, stripping away the fantasy empowerment that shows of this genre latch onto. But because of this, its execution really matters, especially for the big moments, and while sometimes this was good, there are a few of these that were not handled well. Specifically, there's a twist about a third of the way through the series that they end up making blatantly obvious was coming. And because of this, it lost pretty much all of its impact. It also felt kind of rushed as it was happening too, 
which for a show as slow as this, that should not have been an issue. The aftermath was handled better, which did help some, but still that single event could have been done a lot better and that would have made me like the whole thing more. And also, you remember how I said the show is trying to be realistic? Well, there were some events near the end which seemed to come together just too perfectly, and this made it feel unrealistic. Part of it was set up to make it seem kind of possible, but it still felt overly convenient considering the circumstances. And then there's that one other thing that I feel was never explained. If you want me to tell you what that was, uh, go in the comments, ask, or message me on Skype or something. And then there's the fact that like many of the anime that do come out, Green Car is incomplete. This really does not come as a surprise, as you can't really adapt a full light novel series in a single season. And if you try it, things would probably go very, very badly. But still, none of the big questions that were the concept introduced had been answered or really given much information to how to answer them. The show does try to justify this a little bit at the end, but still, that does not make my complaints invalid. Maybe there will be a second season coming out that will fix this. I'm not denying the possibility, but until that second season is announced and comes out, the lack of any answers and an ending really do hurt the show. When it comes to the characters themselves, I am kind of conflicted. When I was first making this review, I was going to say that they did not feel like anything that special, but after watching Mr. Grek with Penguin's review of the show, I see now that the reason why I couldn't see what made the characters good was how subtle this was handled. All the characters have a desire to get stronger, something we see happen as time passes. The main character here, Haruhiro, is a bit different as he finds himself in a more difficult role that's really hard to get into here without spoiling stuff. I did find his role interesting in how he's trying to grow into it, but still did not feel anything all that great. I must say I do like Ranta's character a lot though. He had a strong personality which really helped the whole group dynamic, but what made him so great is when we were able to see past the act he puts on most of the time. He really has some great moments near the end too, which was just, those were awesome. Then there's also Mary, who gets a lot of development, even though she is the last of the main characters to be introduced. Even so, I did find her arc was predictable, though it was done well enough, I guess that's not really something I should complain about. But with the exception of Mary and to a lesser degree Haruhiro, it did not feel like the characters grew that much throughout the series. Yes, they did get stronger, but they didn't really change as people, especially side characters like Shiro and Mogzu. Still, I won't say the characters are bad. They are likable enough and they are explored somewhat, but it doesn't feel like we're done as well as they could have. Maybe this is something that's improved on as you get further in light novels, again, a reason for season 2. And now looking at the visual aspects of the show, well, it's obvious that this show is different. With the backgrounds and the scenery being best described as a watercolor style, and I think this is part of what creates the atmosphere that makes Grimgar stand out. It's a show that took me a while to get into story-wise, but from the very first episode, the art helped to draw me in and leave me with the feeling that this could be a great series. Even though at the time, I really did not think it would be possible for the show to live up to the potential the art and OST was presenting. The traditional character designs did contrast well against the backgrounds, and the action scenes were also really well done with how they could build off the OST. Speaking of OST, it's amazing. I've said in my most recent reviews that while the OST there was good and it helped to set the mood of the show, it did not stay with me. But with Gringar's soundtrack, it is easily memorable. It knows how to use calm music for the calm moments, emotional music for the emotional moments, and the exciting music for the battles do a wonderful job of conveying the hope that the heroes have as they fight. Though I do admit that no names in Grish can be annoying in some of these songs, which makes them less enjoyable to listen to on their own than I was hoping for. The show does have an English dub out, and I think by now nearly all of it is dubbed. If not, it probably will be soon. And I found the dub to be pretty decent. It took a while to get used to the different voices, but once I did, it was fine. So if you're someone who likes watching anime in English, well, it's an option for you. As a whole, this show is something special, and it is an example of why I try so many shows each season. Sure, there may be a lot of anime that end up being bad and uninteresting, but there always seem to be a couple that I'm glad I tried. I made a comment on a first impression video made by Bob Samurai, where I said that from the first episode, it was pretty bad, had a lot of cliches, and was overall generic, but then there's someone who replied who had read the light novels telling me that the story loved to bait the reader with cliches, only to turn and shove them back in their face. And well, he was right, and I want to go read the light novels. I wonder if I can find this. Maybe. We'll find out. So, all that being said, I give Kringar a fantasy and Ash a score of 6.85 out of 10 and a rating of worth checking out. I think if the show got one of these 12 episodes, it really could have been something great. That would have allowed it to answer all these questions and more fully explore these characters. But even with its flaws, it's still something I would recommend. It helped to restore my faith in the whole trapped in a video game genre that has been a cliche since I began watching anime and has almost taken the prize of my favorite trapped in video game anime. For recommendations, the first one is easily Konosuba, which aired right alongside Grimgar, and is in fact my favorite of the whole video game genre. Though Grimgar is mostly serious, Konosuba is a parody of the whole thing and is just really funny, one of the funniest shows I've seen for a while. I also think it's really cool how these different shows came out at the same time and took just completely different directions with the same tropes, but ended up both being really good. For a second recommendation, I'm actually having a lot of trouble thinking of a good one. Maybe it's because of how different Grimgar is from everything else I have seen. 
But since I just recommended two shows that just aired, let's go something a lot older, specifically Gundam War in the Pocket. It is a six episode OVA that introduces a kid to the harsh reality of war, and while the genres are quite different, there is a similar feeling between the two shows. And do not worry if you have not seen any other Gundams before, as even though that I had not, I ended up enjoying it just fine. And yeah, that's everything for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and also follow me on Twitter because there I post things about the anime I've been watching and maybe some other written comments. You'll have to follow me and find out. Alright, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.